In this video, I'll demonstrate and explain a few programming tips in the MotionWorks IEC editing environment. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. POUs can be copied from a restricted project, provided the password is first removed, or they can be exported from one project and imported into another. Unused POUs can remain in the project without compiling, and worksheets can be added for better organization. Create global variables from externals, or update externals from globals. Use toggle boolean for on-screen control. Initialize multi-element variables in a dedicated window or in your code. Copy letter elements as variables, and look over the project events log. These programming tips are features related to the programming environment, and is aimed at those who already have a little experience with it. For a general overview and basic training on MotionWorks IEC, please see our free self-guided video training. Now let's look at this in more detail. A simple way to reuse code is to copy from one project and paste into another. To show you that, I'll first make a new project, and I'm going to name this one Target Project. And now I will open the source project in a new instance of MotionWorks IEC. Notice it's restricted, meaning that edits are not possible. And in this case, the little key icons on the POUs shows that they are locked. This means they cannot be copied. I will go and enter the password and log in, and then uh, go back to the password to completely remove it from the project. And now it's pretty simple to select the POUs that I want to copy, copy them from the restricted project, and paste them into the logical POUs folder of the target project. Notice I already had a POU named initialize, so the pasted project was automatically renamed. Now for organization, I will insert a POU group. I'll call it copy paste and organize these POUs in that group. Now I've copied these POUs, but when I make the project, you see there are errors, and therefore the whole project will not compile. But since these new POUs are not used in any of the tasks yet, there is a way to ignore them. And it's in the project tree under Properties, the Settings tab, and it's called Compile Unused POUs. I'm going to turn that off, so that the software does not try to compile these unused POUs. Okay, and now make was successful. This feature makes it possible to have POUs in your project for reference, testing, or edits, or ideas, whatever. And you can still make edits and check the POU for syntax errors with compile worksheet. Speaking of worksheets, let's look at this initialize POU that I copied in here, and you see that besides the I for info worksheet and the variables worksheet, there are a number of code worksheets, and you can always right click on one of the existing worksheets to insert a new code worksheet. You give it a name, and notice it has to keep the same programming language already used in this POU. Okay. These code worksheets execute from top to bottom. So laying out your POU this way means you can change the execution order by just dragging the worksheet to a different place in the POU. But it still remains part of the same POU. It's simply a way to just help organize your code. Instead of having one long worksheet and scrolling up and down through it, you might consider breaking it up into different worksheets like this. It can make everything easier to find, and it also makes it easy to move or copy sections of your code from uh, one POU to another, like that. Another way to transfer POUs in from another project is using export and import. This way, you don't have to have the entire source project file. It can work well when collaborating with others at work on the same project. Each programmer would periodically export updated versions of their POUs for others to use, and import updates to their own project. 
I'll demonstrate this with the source project that I copied from before with the POUs or the POU group that you want to export selected. I'll just go to file export as extended IEC 61131-3 export browse for a folder if you need to and OK. And now those POUs exist as individual files in that export folder. Now back in the target project, I can go on logical POUs and import with that same format, a POU, and navigate to that export path. I'll just select them all, okay, and they are imported and even in that group folder that they were in before. Now for a few really important details, uh, whether you use copy paste or import export, realize that this is only the POU and not the global variables, libraries, or data types that the POU may use. And this is why these POUs can't compile yet. The POU is just the info page, variable list, and code worksheets. If you look at some of these variables, the var local variables can include the hardware address if there is one and the initial value and these other properties since local variables exist entirely within inside the POU. But remember that a var external is a variable that points to the global variable list. Therefore, they don't carry these properties during export and import or even during copy and paste. Only the name, data type, usage, and description. Sometimes it's helpful in the source project to copy the address into the description for reference, as you can see has been done here. One exception is the toggle boolean property, which is a feature of MotionWorks IEC. Here you can see that toggle boolean TB is preserved during copy and paste, as you can see here in the source project. But a toggle boolean is not part of the IEC 61131 standard, and therefore it's not included in the POU export. And you can see here these variables had toggle boolean checked, but back in the target project, they are not checked. But you can always check them again. Now I've inserted the required libraries for these POUs, and I want to insert a program instance for this RKIO POU in the fast task RKIO. Okay. Now this POU is no longer unused and so it must compile before downloading. But there are a number of errors. There are no matching global variables for any of the var external variables in the POU. The best way to handle this is to right click on the instance and create global variables from externals. Any missing variables will be created in the global variables list under a group called auto insert. This is way easier than copying the variables from the source project or from the list of var externals and trying to figure out which ones are missing. Now the project can compile. And I'll do this for the other POUs as well. Occasionally, you may need to change the global variable data type or description. For example, I see a typo in this description. It should read uh, millimeter instead of inch. There's millimeter. Now, this correction does not automatically apply to all the var externals in all the POUs. For example, here it is in the RK operation, and it still says inches, but I can go to the instance of RK operation and choose update external variables from globals, and now the variable data in the POU matches the global variable list. This simply avoids differences, which may ultimately lead to confusion. Variables with a data type that's an array or a structure such as you see here, are called multi-element variables. You can initialize the elements one by one directly in the program using logic such as this, 
that runs once at startup, but there's an easier way, and it's called the initialize multi-element variable window, which you will have by default. It's down here, initialize multi-element variable. When you select a multi-element variable, it will show the elements down there. And notice there's an initial value column. Now it may be inactive if it's a var external, but if it's a, a var usage, then you can put in the initial value right here in this window, and that will automatically be the value of that element at cold start or warm start, depending on the retain checkbox. Now, if it's a var external, then you'd have to go to the global variable list and set the initial value for each element that you care to set like this. And just like the local variables, these initial values will be applied at cold start and also at warm start, unless the retain property is checked. See the controller startup options video for more about this. Global variables may also be initialized in a POU that runs at warm start or cold start system task, like we're doing here in the initialize one POU. And here's an example of that. This method has a couple of advantages. And for one, only the specific elements that should be adjusted will appear in your code page and can be organized in any order and displayed with appropriate comments. And like you can see here, the value can be calculated internally uh, using mathematical expressions. For these reasons, many programmers prefer to initialize their global variables, multi-element or otherwise. Uh, right here inside of a structured text, POU. Toggle Boolean is a feature that's quite useful as an on-screen interface while the code is running on the controller. It makes Boolean variables respond to a mouse click like a push button. You can turn this on for each Boolean variable in the properties dialog under TB for Toggle Boolean, just like we've seen in the variable list. And when the code is running in debug mode, you can go to online and either deactivate it or activate it on a per worksheet basis. And when it is active, you'll see the toggle Boolean variables are highlighted a different color in debug mode. Now here's a simple tip for editing in the ladder environment. A contact or a coil can be duplicated to the variable format by holding down Control and Shift while dragging the element. Control and Shift. This leaves it in the correct format to plug it directly into a function block. Compare that to holding down only the Control key with a contact or a coil, which makes an exact duplicate, just like a copy, or holding Shift, which completely disconnects the element. My final tip is the Project Events Log. Under Project, Show Operation Log. This is not an undo list, and it does not describe the exact edits that were made, but it does list a summary of every change, as well as the time and the user. You can shorten the list with the filter. For example, show only the physical hardware events. So this simple feature can be helpful for tracking changes as a project moves forward. I hope these tips contribute to your ongoing success with MotionWorks IEC. Thanks for watching this video and go to yaskawa.com slash IECSW to download the latest version of MotionWorks IEC 3.